Good afternoon. I'm pleased to stand before you today along with some of my legislative colleagues and some ASME represented employees of the Oregon Department of Corrections to announce the introduction of House Bill 2910. House Bill 2910 is a really a simply a change in the law that acknowledges that corrections personnel as the trained public safety professionals that they are. This measure would allow corrections staff that hold valid concealed weapons permits the ability to possess those weapons in a locked gun box inside their vehicles on Department of Corrections property while they are at work. Current Department of Administrative Service rules prohibit this practice. So why is House Bill 2910 important? First of all, Department of Administrative Service administrative policy should not trump an employee's Second Amendment rights. Inmates do not escape from state prisons and break into employees' vehicles. They're escapees, and they are rare, and when they do occur, it's because they walk away, usually from a work crew. Having these weapons locked securely in personal vehicles on Department of Corrections property is not a prison security issue. Second, we are talking about highly trained professional correctional officers. These people are part of our law enforcement community and are held to a high standards both pre and post employment. Many are former or active military personnel. They treat weapons with respect and they in turn should be tr treated with the respect that they deserve by our laws. Lastly, this is occasionally a personal safety issue for our corrections workers. We must understand, come on up here, Representative, come join me. Representative Sal Escoval, thank you for joining me. We must understand again and again, respect that these employees deal with the dark side of our society. People are not sentenced to a state prison by accident and our corrections personnel face career criminals daily. They are authority figures to people who, by definition, have not respected authority. Yet eventually, over 90% of these felons who are incarcerated in Oregon State Prisons are released. Many of them settle into the community surrounding the prison they are released from. Unfortunately, some hold grudges against the people who they have supervised inside the prison walls. And in some instances, a few will act out on those grudges. The reality is House Bill 2910 isn't about correction, corrections personnel being allowed to possess their weapons while their vehicles are parked at work. It's about their right to legally possess their weapons while they're in transit to and from work. That's when they can be most vulnerable to someone with a grudge. House Bill 2910 protects corrections employees' rights, acknowledges their professionalism, and training and helps keep them safe off of the job. It's a simple bill that will do a lot. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Jeff Kaufman, who is a correctional officer at EOCI, and he is also vice president of Ask Me Council 75. Jeff. Thank you. I've been a correctional officer for nine years and I've only worked at EOCI, so I'm just gonna talk about EOCI. I know each institution is a little different. Corrections is a very dangerous field. Um, last year in our facility alone, we've had over 400 inmates involved in fights. We have staff assaulted every year. Some seriously, which require time off work, safe claims, all that. Some even have death, death threats. EOCI is one of the oldest institutions. And during that time, officers drive to work often from far distance we have people drive from Hepner, Legrand, <coughs> Milton Freewater into EOCI and since it's an old building we don't have a dressing room we don't have a place to change in our clothing so we basically have to wear our clothing our uniforms to and from work in November 2011 we lost a fellow officer and a friend of mine Buddy Heron he was driving into work one night. He works graveyard, and he stopped to help a motorist that he thought was in trouble. He was murdered alongside the road and left there. With this bill, although we don't know if it would have changed that, 
it at least gives us an opportunity of, you know, we know it couldn't have been worse than what it was. We need the help because people drive long distances to and from work and we are vulnerable. We have a motto at, in corrections, a good shift is when everyone goes home safe. Let's help us maintain that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Esquivel, did you want to share a, a word or two? Just the only thing I can say is that this isn't <clears throat> about the Second Amendment. This isn't about anything other than, to me, it's about the safety of our employees. But more importantly, the reason I do this is because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for these people and their co-workers. If we have a situation where we lose one life or someone gets hurt very badly, and we do not allow them to protect themselves, then we've done them a misjustice. And to me, the right thing to do is to allow these people to protect themselves at all times, to and from work and in their homes as well. So thank you. Thank you, Representative. So we'd take any questions if you have any. Uh, Representative Smith, sure. um, is this, uh, I mean, have you talked with Department of Administrative Services? I mean, is this something they could just change through their rule, administrative rules? I, I have. I'm actually chair of the general government budget uh, subcommittee in Ways and Means, and the Department of Administrative Services is a, is a budget that I review. Uh, we've had conversations with the department, and uh, this is a recommendation that we need to proceed forward with. So, I mean, I'm, so I'm not clear. Are they not on board with this, and so you're proposing a bill to sort of... You know, the, the Department of Administrative Services has brought forward their rule, and, and their rule prohibits uh, the bringing on of weapons on the Department of Corrections property. Uh, House Bill 2910, uh, when passed by the House and by the Senate and signed by the governor, uh, would allow our correctional officers to bring their weapons into the parking lots at the Department of Corrections. Um, what about the DOC? How do they feel about it? You know, we have not had an opportunity to communicate with them. Um, another question uh, is um, to Mr. Kaufman. Um, first of all, could you uh, spell your last name just it's to make C -O -F -F -M -A -O. sure? C-O-F-F-M-A-N. C-O-F-F-M-A-N. Um, with, uh, with Officer uh, Heron, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, you said we, you wouldn't know specifically if this law would, how that would have impacted yeah, that. We have but no idea. Was, I mean, was it ever definitively discovered whether he was targeted because of his um, profession or was it a crime of opportunity? It was, from as far as we know, it was a crime of opportunity. He was in uniform. He saw a motorist who stopped alongside the road. He was also a volunteer firefighter, so he stopped to assist that person. Being in uniform, the person didn't necessarily know he was a correction officer, not a police officer. The vehicle he was in was stolen. So he basically was just trying to do whatever he could do to get out of there. Any other Sorry, questions? I got here a little bit late, but sure. um, what uh, people are probably concerned that you're, you're going to be bringing guns in closer to the prison. How do you... Uh, combat those? Well, what I would share with you, and, I, and I'll, I'll go back to this, uh, um, you know, DAS administrative policy should not trump an employee's Second Amendment rights. Uh, inmates are not escaping uh, from state prisons, and when it does occur, it's very rare, uh, but they are not uh, getting into vehicles in the parking lot. Usually when escapes occur, uh, it's, it's during a work crew walkaway incident. And so uh, what this legislation do would, would allow our professionals here to lock their weapons in their vehicles in the parking lots. What this is is it's allowing our correctional officers the opportunity to be safe when they're traveling to and from work. I'm concerned that now uh, if this passes, maybe uh, prisoners would know that there would be guns in cars in the parking lot and then... You know, what I what I would share with you is uh, uh, we come from Eastern Oregon, and uh, there's already uh, weapons in, in vehicles in Eastern Oregon. What this bill does is it acknowledges that these gentlemen and ladies uh, behind me are trained professionals. Uh, they're recognized in the community for the high standards uh, in, in their pre and and post employment, and. Um, 
what it would do is it would give them the ability to maintain uh, the right to protect themselves and their family as they're traveling to and from work. Do the uh, current uh, D Department of Administrative Services rules, do they apply to visitors, like people coming to visit? Yes. If they have a yes. So, okay. And this bill wouldn't change that? Correct. That's correct. Jeff, what this, what this bill does is it overturns the administrative service rule that says our correctional employees cannot have their weapons in a lockbox in their vehicle on state property. Have the corrections uh, leadership, have they expressed concern about this bill? Are they supportive? You or? know, we have not heard from them. Uh, Department of Administrative Services, they're the ones who have handed down this rule. Uh, this occurred in the last 12 months, uh, and that's the reason we're bringing House Bill 2910 forward. So they were, up to 12 months ago, allowed to bring their That is correct. Guns. Okay. That is correct. Do you have any sense of how many or what portion of employees did that or would do that if they were allowed to again? You know, I don't know, but if, but if it'll protect one correctional officer, um, this is the right thing to do. Please come on up, Representative. We have Representative Witt with us. Are there particular uh, incidents that you're, you're worried about? I mean, is it more just the fact that because you, you wouldn't be able to have the, the gun in your vehicle while you're traveling to and from work, or are there specific instances where somebody at the workplace would want to be able to go out? And yeah, let me, let me share with you, Jeff. I, I think you missed this earlier. Um, you know, occur, occasionally there are personal safety issues, as, as was explained earlier. Um, you know, the folks, the folks that I represent, that we represent, uh, live in the communities in which they work and and when inmates are released out of the Department of Corrections quite often they remain close to the Department of Corrections facility in which they are incarcerated and unfortunately many times these inmates hold grudges and what the gen ladies and gentlemen behind me are asking for is the ability to protect themselves as they travel to and from their home. Any other questions? Thanks. We sure appreciate you coming out today, and we want to thank Ask Me and, and all the members and, and the good representatives for being here today. Uh, if you have any future questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Thank you.